Hello, everyone. It's Max McAllister back with, I guess we're going to be on part four. You'll have to check the title if I get it right or not. But now starts the fun where we actually get to begin to build our fire rock fireplace and our water wall. So this is, uh, cheers to this. You know, you can tell I'm now the work's done. I, I, like I say, I keep enjoying my wine. All right. Here we go. So we ended our last video um, with uh, blocks laid out that were representing where we were going and where we were going to get started. Now, tons of videos again on the, lot, on the internet. <clears throat> You're going to want to study how to mix mortar. Lots of videos on that. How to lay uh, cinder blocks. How to lay a base course. How to lay a cornerstone. How to lay how to use a string line, how to use um, a line level, how to use all kinds of stuff. So write these things down. You are going to have to use a string line, and they have a line level. So <clears throat> they sell uh, Mason's line at the hardware store. See this orange colored line? You want to be able, they're going to show, there's videos on how to do it, on how to pull the line and make it tight like doing like a banjo string. If the line's not tight, you can't create a level line. Then there's a little tiny tool that's a few dollars that's a, a line level that hooks to the string and lets you see if your string is level. You have to really take time. Close is not close enough. The, the, I, I can't stress this enough, and I think you'll see most of the masons that talk about doing stonework do this. You have to go for dead perfection, right? And particularly when you don't know what the hell you're doing, like I didn't, okay? You have to take as much time as it takes to get it right, okay? And the reason is, if you start and lay one course of blocks that is slightly out of whack, the next one will be more out of whack, and the next one will be more, and eventually you've ended up with a giant pile of shit in your yard that's just like the leaning tower of Pisa, just pure junk, okay? You don't want pure junk in your yard. All right, we're gonna try and build, I'm gonna try and help you be sure that you build something nice. So, you know, I'll be honest, you ought to go off somewhere in a corner of your yard and make a mess. Put a piece of plywood down, slop mortar on it, and, and try and lay three cinder blocks and just make a TP or turn a corner. You know, just go one, two, three, then stagger one, two, and put one on top and turn a corner, go one, two. Just, just go somewhere with a sheet of plywood, like maybe your driveway's level. Just, just make a mess. The, you're talking about twenty-five dollars worth of shit, right? Who cares? You, you practice, practice in your yard. Oh, you know, someplace where it doesn't matter before you start your project. I would encourage you to do that. I didn't. I was practicing on my site, but I ended up, you know, tearing it apart, putting it down, tearing it apart, putting it down until I got it going right. You know, so you could practice anywhere and not waste time and, and make any mess on your site like I was doing. So, uh, you know, mixing mortar is one thing, but then taking it, putting it on a trowel, handling it, slinging it, moving it, shaping it, you know, holding it, controlling it, scraping it onto the cinder blocks. All of this is skill, and there's many videos on this topic, too many for me to spend the time teaching you how to lay, put mortar, and run a course of blocks. So many skilled people teaching this. I'm not gonna do it. But I will tell you, just go somewhere and practice it. Just bring a four by eight sheet of plywood, throw it on the ground, and try and put some blocks on it. You're not gonna hurt anything. You're not even gonna ruin the blocks when you're done. And you go, look at that, I did it, it's level, it's square, I turned a corner, the corner is, is square, it all came out right. Just kick it over like you're on the beach with a sand castle. You scrape the mud right off the cinder blocks, you didn't lose a dollar, you wasted, you know, uh, 20 cents worth of mortar or whatever, it doesn't even matter. And you still got your cinder blocks, they're fine. Uh, <clears throat> so, highly recommend that. Now, um, string lines are going to be what you need to live by. In per, 
hugely while you get started, hugely. Now, what are some mistakes that you're going to make that I want you to not make because I made them and I'm going to tell you to avoid them? Let me show you. There's an, any Mason who's going to watch this video already knows the first mistake I've made, okay? Now, I'm going to have a drink to this because it was a bad one, all right? What you see here is my beautiful site that I've laid out and imagined in my mind. When it comes time to lay blocks down, guess how it works out? Blocks don't touch in the masonry world. Mortar goes between blocks. That's what makes blocks stick together. So if we had 3 eighths of an inch of mortar in between all of those blocks, now my project is so big that it doesn't fit on my pad anymore. Huge problem, okay? Luckily, I left huge gaps under my foundation of, of excess just by luck. I didn't do that by skill, or by, I just thought, you know what? If I need to wiggle it or something or before I start, so I was just blind luck. I had six inches to work with on either end of my project because there's three-eighths of an inch of mortar has to go between every single one of these blocks, which spreads the whole project out. <clears throat> Huge mistake. Please plan for that. Um, you have to be good at math to do this, this game, right? This is not a, um, this is not a project for uh, people who are, aren't comfortable with numbers, measuring, calculating. Um, if you're not, Bring someone out who is, maybe they're not a handy person, but maybe they're good at math. Maybe your wife's better at math. Your son uh, is some college engineer, but he can't, uh, t can't screw a light bulb in. Between the two of you, maybe you figure it out. All right, so mortar goes between every block. Don't just lay them out like I did. Huge mistake. I can't say that big enough, all right? Now, what you see here is my fire rock fireplace is going to go here. These are wood boxes that I want to store wood. And then <clears throat> literally I just, this is just created out of my imagination completely on the fly. This is my water feature. Okay. There is no plan for this on the internet. You're not going to find anything like it. Um, and so therefore you're going to have to use your own imagination to a great extent. Now, um, again, remember I was telling you earlier, Sometimes there's just a block that I haven't cut that's just in the way, you know, for because I wasn't going to take the time to cut it while I was laying something up. Now, what is important is your fire rock fireplace base plate. Okay, now I made my this hole in here suit my fire rock fireplace base plate. Remember this because when I come back to it, it's going to be very important here shortly in the future. Um, now, I was able to segregate these two projects, and uh, that's going to be also a mistake, and I'm going to tell you about that later. Anything you're going to do on a project of this scope, you have to build it, no matter how your mind or brain works. You have to build it literally one complete level at a time in order to main main ensure that it maintains level, okay? So you'll see later, uh, mine gets a little askew because I, wanted, I built one firebox up completely. And then I tried to build the other firebox and they didn't match side to side. Now, no one on earth knows that but me and now everyone on YouTube because I told you that. No one in North could see that, but I'm a perfectionist. I wanted my project to be perfect and look spectacular, and so that's how I wanted to do it. Well, <clears throat> my new experience dictates to me that you would literally never proceed without every course on that next level being done, okay? So don't do that what I did. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Uh, just some more views. Um, still kind of taking a look at my whole project. You'll notice the tent. Tent and shade are crazy important. All right, 
Now I've gotten started. You remember I told you how badly I screwed up, right? Um, here are my string lines. Now these are doing tight. And there's cool videos that show you how to do this. You go, how do I get a string so tight? The masons will teach you how to make those strings that perfect. So all my strings are dead perfect level. They're dead straight. And what I did was I plotted them to be um, a, a certain level above so that I could slide a tool under them and a block without messing with them. That was kind of my own trick that I did. Um, so my strings aren't touching the blocks because this is a base course. The base course is the absolute hardest, most painful, slowest, most soul crushing thing that's going to take you so long. And what makes it worse is you are on the ground as low as you're ever going to get on your hands and knees, crawling around 50 pound blocks, buckets of heavy concrete and mortar, you know, concrete mortar. It, it's very, very difficult work. Okay. Now, um, you know, there's no right or wrong patterns. So I knew that I was going to come back. Uh, I'm, I'm interlocking blocks everywhere. It didn't really matter to me which way I went first and there's no law or rules or anything about this. So um, I just chose to run these blocks longitudinally. I came back laterally and overlapped them uh, perpendicular. It, it just didn't matter. <clears throat> now, you'll see I had lots of cut blocks here. Cut block, cut block, cut block, cut block, cut block here. You know, I, I, this stuff gets tricky and painful. Now, uh, with your fire rock fireplace, uh, if you're going to have benches and have it be at seat height, which pretty much everybody in the universe is going to do, it just happens to work out the two courses of CMUs are going to give you a nice height, a comfortable height. And if you use then a, uh, uh, a heavy stone uh, plate that's readily available in most stone yards. They call them stairs or steppers or they they got different names for them, but that will give you like a kind of a comfortable seated 18 inch height. So when you sit down, it feels normal. If you're, even if you're tall or short, it feels, it feels very comfortable. Um, so this was literally an eight hour day of work for me. I'm sure a professional would do that in two hours. Now there's going to be two differences. Uh, one, a professional knows what they can get away with. I don't know what I can't get away with. So I did this perfect. If you were to come with this, you could come with a machinist level and my job was perfect. A mason would never do that. I'm certain of it, but mine was perfect. I also had shit tons of wasted time. You know, when a block wouldn't be right, one would be too low. Your biggest problem is if a block is too low, when you go to square it and level it, you, you, there's no way to fix that. And you're going to try and jam some mortar or whatever. It's never going to work. You'll, you'll eventually figure that out. If the block drops low, haul it out of the way, sling more mud in there, put the block back, squish it back down and get it level and square and keep going. Right? So <clears throat> it's a complicated process because you're taking care of the block in multiple planes. Um, again, all the YouTube videos are going to teach you this. So if you were just talking about one block in the universe, you're trying to uh, level it uh, front to back, left to right, and then you're trying to square it side to side on your, on your line. That's just one block. Now we're going to put the next one in line. That one has to square and level to the first one. You get this like conga line of like millimeter of, of uh, you know, centipede body parts wiggling down the line. They've all got to square right up. They've all got to be level on top. They've all got to have a smooth face. They've, everything has to line up perfectly. It takes a lot of effort to get it to do that. It has to match this string line. And then let's not even talk about turning a corner and making a perfect 90 degree turn and going off in another direction. It's very, very difficult. So, um, uh, this base course is going to be the worst, hardest thing because it is the hardest thing to do. And unfortunately it's the first thing you do. So when you have the least knowledge, the least experience, the least talent, the least practice, the least everything, you're, 
you're going to be expected to do the hardest possible job for a mason to do, which is to get a project off the ground and get it going in the right direction correctly and levelly. Very, very difficult. Take your time. This is just crap. A block costs a dollar eighty-seven. You're talking about fifty cents worth of mortar. Who cares if you screw it up? Kick it off the thing. Get mad. Whatever you want to do. Throw your trowel around. Go have a beer. Uh, stop. Come back another day if you're too frustrated. Just don't screw your project up. Make sure you get it right. You know this is this. This is going to be your Sistine Chapel in your backyard. You know, they, it's not going to be done in a day. So get it right. <clears throat> All right. Now, notice my shade, don't forget. You're going to need the shade, 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 shade. Now, I, I didn't concern myself with this, with my second project here, OK? And I could kind of get away with that in this instance. In hindsight, I probably would have carried on from here, um, building that level um, in the future. Uh, and I would recommend that. I wouldn't go past what's going on here. I would continue on with this. I would actually not even, I would do the whole first course, then the whole second course. Now, uh, here is a point in um, history where I'm going to kind of pause and I'll come back to the Fire Rock fireplace. Because now what I want to show you is um, a completed foundation. You might not be doing a water, water wall, but pretty much everybody doing a fire rock fireplace is going to want um, something like this. The fireplace, a wood box, you might choose to have a little pizza oven or a, you know, a gas grill installed here or something. For me, um, I've got a nice grill up on my deck. My kitchen's by the deck. We're not running up and down stairs like monkeys trying to grill some something down here. This is for pure pleasure. We're just sitting down here being warm and comfortable with my wife and enjoying a fire and we wear it out and uh, that's all we want. So the wood makes it symmetric, which, you know, I have a very strange brain. I like things to be equal, perfect, smooth and symmetric. So two wood boxes looks good to me. So that was my project for the Fire Rock fireplace. This is your two courses of CMUs. And oh, an important note here. So what a, a Fire Rock fireplace can be equated to just being the framing of a house. It, it isn't. There's nothing to it. It is the safe, reliable, approved, tested, engineered, fire safe structure for you to burn a fire in. But past that, it just looks like a shack in the woods. It's just a piece of crap, right? Because all it is is the framing. I mean, you wouldn't want to live in a house that was just stick standing up. So you want some beef around it. So what I did and what a lot of people do is add a course of CMUs around the fire rock fireplace structure. So what you see here is that thickness. I'm using one wall of my wood boxes as some of that thickness for the fireplace. And then I've added a full back wall around it. So all I'm doing is just adding beef to my fireplace so that it doesn't look skinny and spindly. I'm going to, this is a big stone structure, right? And I want it to look rugged and, uh, you know, ser you know, serious. So, all right. So that's my, how I did that. Courses CMUs there, courses CMUs around the back, courses CMUs on the side, and then I've, I've integrated it into my wood boxes. Yeah, if you notice, all of, I've uh, staggered all the blocks, right? Just like you would interlock anything with a normal block structure. This, we're just gonna, now, I filled this absolutely solid with, with concrete. Again, I'm totally insane, sorry. Don't know what to say. I knew I'm putting a shit ton of weight on top of this. It's going to be crazy, the weight that goes on top of this. Um, I am going to coat this entire structure with Tennessee field stone, big heavy stones, 10,000, tens of thousands of pounds of them going up in the air. It's crazy. So I just poured all this solid. My wood boxes, they're just going to have wood in it and there's nothing on it. So I'm going to fill these with dirt. Then I'm going to put a, 
a concrete slab on top of them, you know, once I backfill it, because I wasn't going to create, you know, this is 200 bags of concrete. I'm not going to do that. It'll just put some dirt in there. It's not bearing any weight. It doesn't matter. All right, so there's my uh, base for my fire rock fireplace. And I'm going to stop this video, and I'll go on to the next one, and we'll start seeing how it progresses from there. So I'm Max McAllister. Please like this video. Share with your friends who are interested in doing a project like this. And then uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll keep the cool content coming. We're going to have another glass of wine and another video. <laughs> See ya.